We have a tradition here in Gloucester that somebody has to kiss the fish before we get started. <laughs> here we go, right? Yeah. G-Max is going to kiss the fish. All right. It's official. It's been christened. Did you get that? I got it, baby. All right. We'll send that off to the noise, and uh, it'll be on the cover next month, right? Yeah. Um, for those of you who want to cut some fish, be, I'm a lefty, so you might as well be, you go to stand over here if you want to see what I'm doing. Um, you'll, you'll get a good good shot of my shoulder. Steve, should we move and you can stand here so everyone can no, see? Then, no, then, okay. no, no, this is, this is right. a good, good thing. Um, like Peter said, I already cut three of them and you didn't see it, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to slow it down so everybody can see how... Uh, some good techniques and some good methods on how to do it in your in your kitchen okay so I'm, uh, I'm doing this to, to gain yield I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna cut this a boneless I'm gonna cut it full nape so I can get this part of the meat um, so if you want to just watch and, and learn so my first cut is up here by this lateral line and I'm gonna cut up towards the head now see if I went straight across see the meat I would lose by doing that if I went straight across between the two sides, it's almost a meal. I'm going to separate this nape from the um, the collarbone there. Okay, now there's a couple little tricks to do, and that's to move the fish to the edge of the table. That's that makes your job a lot easier. Oh, I've got the most important thing. What do you think it is? Sharp knife. Sharp knife. Sharp knife. Sharp knife. If, if you don't have a sharp knife, I wouldn't even bother. I would cook it whole. <laughs> you can, or do you can something. get a knife like that at Nelson's for twelve dollars. And you can get a knife like this at Nelson's for twelve dollars. Some value added commentary right wow, there. Go, right? Yeah, I don't, life is good. Take the mic next time you want to talk. Right. Right. So the next trick, this is this is a very this is a very important one. Now right here, the, the skin's a little thin right here near near this this fin bone. But what do you what you want to do is make a little tiny cut like that. Alright? See that? Then I want to look in and I want to make sure that I can find that top bone. Because this, this is where everybody makes a mistake. If you can if you can get your knife on top of that bone, you're golden. Now watch what I'm doing. I'm laying my knife in, and I'm just making little cuts. All right, see how I'm doing that? Now, you know, you're, you're in your kitchen. You can say you did this in three cuts if you want, whatever. You can really take 30 cuts, and it won't make any difference, right? So, um, I'm laying, I've got my knife on the top of that that bone. That's this is crucial. I can't emphasize this enough. All right, because the common mistake is to go under that or or be too high. But once you take your time and get onto that bone, that, you, the, the job is done. Okay. Then you just slide your knife along, make little cuts. See how I'm doing this? I'm just sliding along, and I'm opening the fish up. But my knife is just on that bone. I'm just laying it flat on that bone. Okay. So I'm going to just continue making these little cuts. I'm going to uh, sweep it back this way because, but the same, because I, I want to extract this meat. But the same thing, I, I'm right on the top of that bone. Now, look at that. I'm just carving it away. Look how sharp that knife is, folks. Yeah. It's got to be sharp. It's got to be sharp. Yeah, and it's got to be smoothed, too. It can't be burrs in the knife. All right, so I'm just, I'm going to open this baby up. All right, see how I'm doing that? Again, I, I, I went over the the, the, uh, the center bone, but I'm still just taking my time, little quarter inch cuts, nothing big, using the tip of my knife or this part of the knife. No sawing, notice I'm not doing any sawing, I'm, I'm pushing. And I'm just opening the fish up. Now up here, because I want to I want to extract this meat up here, I'm going to cut through these nape bones up here. So I'm going to just do a little, little pull through, and separate a little bit, and cut down. Okay, once you can see, you can hear the bones cracking. But that's all right, because we're going to take those bones out later. So then I come down, still doing that little cutting stuff. All right, see how I'm doing that? And there we go. Nice. Woo. All right. <laughs> now, but if you do this, if you do this like on an assembly line, how, how long does it take to get that part done? Um, if I was doing this professionally, I would have gone one. Two, three, four. And wow. that's about how fast it would be. About ten seconds. Or less. Or less. Or less. Six yeah. seconds. Yeah. Four seconds. One, right. two, two, up three. and down. Yeah. See, four you show, seconds. Can you show them how to, where the cheeks are? Oh yeah. Uh, the, the cheeks part. are right here. Yeah. Uh, the, cheeks. the cheeks are right in here, this area. Mm -hmm. 
they go, you, you pull, pull them from all around here, you got these little stringers here, and it comes all around in here. Um, and the tongue too is, is, is something that you can eat right here, this part. Yeah. Um, just cut that out. It's a little more gelatinous, but it's it's still good. Yeah. It's just a whole different texture. You know, people right. aren't used to that. How, that how do you cook the tongue? Saute them. Saute them. Yeah. A lot of people don't know what fried cheeks are. Oh, oh, for people that don't know, fried cheeks, if you, uh, I, I don't get paid for saying this, but if you like fish, go to the House of Mitch and get their fried cheeks. It's one of the best lunches. Oh, and you just moved to Gloucester. You got to know about this. One of the best luncheons in town. One of the best uh, deals. Fried cheeks. They have big ones. So they've gotten, you know, sometimes they're really little ones, and oh boy, those are so like good. Beer, like well, if you like beer and if you like sort of authentic Gloucester, uh, I don't know what. Cuisine, yeah. But the House of Mitch projects. I'm sure other places do it too. I said, forget everything Steve's teaching you. Cook your fish home. <laughs> Is this the time that we ought to talk about the fact that they get points for using a whole fish, which they can't do because they don't have the head? So what are we going to do about that? Let's do the best we can. All right. First year that we did came in fresh catch, we didn't have fillets, so we caught everybody out of cooking whole. Um, I could have I could have showed you how to cook this whole. What I would have done is taken off all these fins, and um, and then just presented it that way. And it's it's delicious that way. You score the skin. You don't have to scale cod. Um, geez, we we really could have done it that way. Maybe next maybe next time on August 11th when we're here again, we'll do a whole one. Right? That, that's good. But you could also after you fillet it, you can use uh, the bones for. I mean, you could you know. We, we put the yeah. bones in the garden, oh, yeah. right? That's what I do. We put a head with every tomato plant, right? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have enough room for the plant, it's gonna be like a swamp thing growing out, you know? But, I got tomatoes this big already. Yeah. Right. And, and, but you can also make stock out of the, oh, out of the bones, and it's no, delicious. Yeah, really. yeah. Yeah. You, tell, tell me about the jewelry. I want to hear this. Does everybody know any fish? I need some lime well, zest in this. Many fish. I boil the whole fish, and then I separate the bones. They're very sculptural, and I've worked with them for years. Also, there's a, a myth um, that I work off of. Lucky bones, or I don't know if you would know about it. Lucky bones are the radar bones that are found inside the skull of the flounder. And it was a, a legend that I was told from, um, I was told about this legend in Marblehead by an old, the oldest, uh, uh, the oldest um, fish market there. And what you would do, what you would believe when you were a fisherman and went out to sea was that these lucky bones brought you good luck and the Madonna was seen sculpturally on the back of the lucky bone. So the fishermen carried them in their pockets for good luck when they went out fishing. So that's why I get the napes because I boil them and I know where to find. He showed me how to find the bones, and then I make them into jewelry. And you know, I've had this going on for a long time. Maybe we could do this at one of these throwdowns. I mean, if you're not going to eat it, you can wear it. Right? Could that be it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could show you a lot. Yep. Uh, we will have to talk about that. Thank you. Okay, back to. How are we coming over oh, here, guys? What's going on here now? Good. Back to Steve. So the fish is off the table. So how is the? Where's the fish? The fish Elvis has left the building. All right. All right. All right so we have uh, a hole and back. we have two fillets. Um, no, no, no. I just filleted it. Oh, we have four fillets. Okay. I like. I wanted to be so done we're, with the uh, bones. We're roasting <laughs> some beets, some fresh um, beets. And I want to do that same method that I did. It's actually a little yes. easier on this side because the bow is nice and flat. Down here at the end of the tail, I'm just going to get in there. Again, I'm just going to make sure that I'm on the top of that bone. See if I'm reaching down in there? And the same method, just taking little little cuts, and I'm resting my, my knife right on the bone. It's easier this way. I mean, see how I'm, I'm, I'm taking the liberty of going a little further than I usually do on that. But see how I'm doing that? Just lifting right up. Just going to reverse my cut here because I can. Okay, see how I'm opening that up? And the same thing, I want to make a little cut, cut through those bones, put a little tear, come down, and just use the tip of that knife and finish it off. There we go. 
and this is what it should look like. All right. All right. Can, can you get the cheeks out for us? I could, yep. And uh, these collars are good to eat too. You can cut them off and throw them in the frying pan. They're actually very flavorful. If you wanted to do it that way, cut the cheeks out. It's easier with a smaller knife, believe it or not. I haven't cut a cheek in probably 10 years, but okay. I got most of it. I have five plus five. And how much time is left? 23 minutes. Okay, there's a cheek. Like a little nice. scallop. It's like a little scallop. And they're, oh, they're delicious. You can saute them, you can fry them. The stringer, which is probably not as flavorful as the cheek, but it's still very good. Anybody want them? Just put it in your pocket. <laughs> so what, what, uh, what, by weight, what percentage of the fish is that fillet? Um, the two fillets are, are about 45%. You know yeah. Yeah. The, the way that it is now with the full name. Yeah. So, and if you were cutting this professionally, that whole process would have taken, uh, let me guess, 25 seconds? Uh, oh, I don't know, probably, yeah, on the long shot, on the long side, yeah. yeah. So four a minute, can you do four a minute? Um, yeah, uh, many moons ago. <laughs> hey, I remember right. those days. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to talk about the uh, the silverware that they're going to be using. Is oh yeah, the, the the silverware is biodegradable, right? Yeah, that's yeah, really not fun. So you can wow. eat the fish, you can eat your fork, <laughs> right? Or if you, but, but if not, don't throw it in. The, I don't know where we're going to put it, but it could it, it will biodegrade. You could take it home, put it in your pocket, take it home, put it in the compost. And uh, it'll be gone by well, morning. The, the point is that it's not going to be, you're not going to find it on the ground here 750 years from now. Right, 750 yeah. years from now, right. it'll be another fish. You know, or, or, well, maybe not a fish. It'll be something. This guy's good. Yeah. Okay, so, what else? Let's finish up. I'm going to finish this up. Um, I'm going to skin the fish.